So for the nine patch within a nine patch, um, I chose four colors and um, I cut them each at two inches by 18 inches because I need to, uh, three strips each. I need to make two um, different colorway, colorways, color strips, strip sets um, for each, each uh, nine patch. And this is my first set. It'll look like this. And then my second set is the same. You have two on the outside. Like so. And then the next one will be um, the opposite, of course, with the two darks. And on the outside and the light on the inside. When you sew these, um, sew down one side and up the other. You can obviously do production sewing, just chain piece, chain piece, chain piece. When you sew your remainder on, make sure you go the other way. I will see you back here as soon as we have these sewn together. So you, you, you press your thing open, your, your strip open, um, you set your seams, press them open, you go back to the machine and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't know which way to sew. My tip for you is usually when you start, um, I always start at the clean ends, not the salvage ends, um, because a lot of times the salvage end tells me, okay, yes, now I need to go back the other direction. Also on this one, like on this one, this is my other tip. Let's see if I can see how they're uneven. That's my other clue. So I'm going to start at this end and sew down that way. Just a quick little tidbit for you. Um, I always try to start with the neat ends first. The neat ends first and then start at the salvage ends second. I was playing, I was playing with my camera view because I'd really like you to see this. This is for better accurate cutting. Um, so I've sewed my strip pieces together the seams are all the same direction. Now the big thing I want to show you is this piece. <laughs> it's one of these things just doesn't belong here. Um, <laughs> the difference between this one and the rest of them can you see these ripples? These are ripples. So when you're cutting and you touch and that ripple likes to move um, do you see that? See how that moves? It is so important, I think, if you are going for the most accurate of accurate quilts, after you have sewed and set your seams and pressed your seams open, give it a burst of starch, flip it over, and press all the way down. Let it cool. You'll get a nice, firm, fairly stiff piece of fabric that's not going to have these ripples in it. So now we have our four strip sets um, pressed and starched and all the seams are pressed to one side on, on each of them. We're going to need ten of this one, five, eight, and four. Now I'm going to cut these. I'll show you how I like to cut these. You can cut them one at a time if you so choose, which is perfectly fine. Whichever way you can cut the most accurate. You want to line up really well on these two sides. Now when I line up my ruler, I'm going to line up against the edge that I know is a straight cut because this needs to be trimmed. Cutting ruler, or cutting rotary tool. So that's trimmed. Now either flip your board or flip your fabric. Okay, so
so because we only need five and I set these up wrong it's okay um usually I put the other one on the top but it's okay so line up your ruler again on your bottom line right now I'm measuring on the 10 inch line um because I need five of one and we're doing two inch strips give this a little tug now cut these into two inch strips move your ruler back two inches you're cutting off of your original cut line this helps keep straight lines Take your time for cutting and lining up. There's no no rush. And to six. There's just little things you can do that make your quilt more accurate if you take um, just a tiny bit more time with. It's well worth it, especially if you're thinking about you'd like to enter it in a quilt show, craft fair, it just gives it more quality and um, the two inch line. There we go. Okay, so, oh boy, oh boy, we have a thread. So, okay, so that's our first strip, strip, our first set of five. Now we need five more out of this guy. This guy we can use in another quilt. Okay, so we know that this is a pretty square cut. And I need five more, so I'll go to the ten. Line up your top and bottoms. Should be six inches. No, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Five inches. Little piece for the scrap bin. That's got mostly salvage, but it might be workable. And then back your ruler up every two inches and give a cut. You're going to do this with your other strip set as well. However, you're cutting eight of one and four of the other. I will show you how to sew together one nine patch and I will show you how to sew together the full nine patches. The, the, um, the full mini quilt. Or I'll give you tips on it. Or something. We'll see what happens when we get there. But I will show you at least one mini nine patch. I almost made a bad cut there make you cry. Alright, in our last one. Now, if you leave your strips, your cut strips, stacked the way we cut them, this is the stack of five with both colors, this is the stack of five by itself, this is the stack of um, four with both colors and this is the stack of four with a single color. It makes for very easy setup of your block and layout. So you'll take from the top pile, there's our first one. Now the second one, you're going to flip from this direction to this direction because all our seams are going that way. We need to flip one coming back the other way for the nesting process. Then you take the third one from the bottom pile. Okay, same thing with this one. There, flip the second one 
take from the bottom, my dog's snoring, sorry, and take uh, from the bottom pile there, and then we'll put one here, second one, it's flipped, now I know these look a little crazy, out of whack, not square, because we have not sewed our seams yet, remember, so then our next blocks here, Flip the second, take from the small pile and put it on the bottom. Don't clip it though. And then this one will go here. Second one flip over. Bottom pile. This one. Second. Flip over. From the bottom pile, just stick it up there, almost there, flip, I should have took that from the bottom pile, that's okay, it's okay if you don't, it all works out in the end, flip this one though, put this here, and then our last one, with a flip, now these are all going to be sewn, oops, even my seams going that way. These are all going to be sewn in individual blocks. You want to sew, we're going to sew these together. And then we'll sew the whole big nine patch together. I think that makes it easier for keeping your seams straight. When you press your seams for your two rows on, on the outside, um, press them in one direction. Your middle row, you're going to want to go the opposite direction for when we sew those blocks together. Now, my tip for going over to the sewing machine, I'm just going to take this, and I know these are the two sides that go together, and pin very quickly. I'll adjust at the sewing machine. I pin the side that I like, or that I know that I need to sew on. That way, when I go to the machine, um, I know that I'm going to be sewing on this side. Also, for this and brain's sake, so I'm not over there ironing and saying, well, is this, which one is this, which one is that, which direction do I need to go? My next tip is to take your pieces from the outside and do those first and do this row separately. So now I can take these and I can go production sew, press them all the same direction and then come back and we'll sew these pieces on. We've got our other ones done, but I wanted to show you the nesting again. So you have, you're going to go like, slide your fabric this way, and then zoom it this way, um, until they lock. You'll feel them bump up against each other, and those seams will lock in perfectly. That's your nesting. Then just do your quarter inch. Snip these apart and we'll press them open. So now I'm going to set myself up for um, sewing the next row. And make sure everybody is 
looking pretty good. Wrong piece. That guy's gonna go there. Um, you're gonna go here. And you're gonna go here. And we're gonna do that. And then um, pin. You can pin, pin your pieces where you're going to the sewing machine with. Keeps you all good and straight together. helpful tip might be okay so my seams are pressed open going to the left these ones are going to the right and I know I showed you to slide it in well that's not going to work with this one we have to go the opposite way because of the way if these are uh, or if these are facing the left put them on the left and slide them in and then go for it and sew lock them in Make sure everything's kind of nice and neat there. Or you might get an ubu. It's all good. This one I would call dead. I mean, I could use it some more, I guess. But it's getting close. It's getting pretty hairy. Now that our little nine patches are sewn together, you want to make sure your seams, I have these ones, our last seams, are facing this way. These ones in the middle are facing that way, and these are going down. So you're going to sew each of these rows together like a so. And then you'll sew this bottom one to there. And what else? Um, I'm going to pin before I go to the machine. Another way I do this, since these are bigger now and they're a little bit more manageable, um, I'll pin that to there, open it back up, and pin this one to here. And that way I know. And then I'll press them all open at once. Just like so. At this point, this is what your back should be looking like. These are going in this direction, these are going in this direction, and these are going in this direction. We're going to be sewing these together, and yes, we have all these little seams to nest. But you should be really good at it by now. And um, this won't matter which way you press your seam open before you do the next one. For the sake of time, I've gone ahead and I've taped down our batting and our backing. If you aren't sure how to do that, look at our first block video, part two at the end of that. 
Um, I've also gone through and I've pinned around our edges to make sure we have no shifting. Um, I basted our quilt top down. Um, it measured out at three or thirteen and a quarter, thir no, thirteen and a half inches. So I measured two and a quarter inches on all sides, and I fiddled with it, got it in the center. Then I went ahead and pinned um, every other direction I do so that it doesn't shift. Now I want two borders. You can choose to have one. You'd never want on your outside nothing less than an inch and a half, however, okay? So for this one, um, it's going to be a skinny border. When you oh, Also, when you get to these pins on the outside, you're going to be sewing down this edge, so make sure they're in, snugged in. Um, I cut four, one inch, and they're by 21. I leave them long to make sure I can get my miters in. I'm going to put this down here and put one on the other side and I'm going to sew corner I'm going to sew to the corners back tacking when I get there um, you can put a little marker pin in here for a reminder this is where you need to start and stop that's kind of what I like to do and so corner to corner corner to corner and I'll meet you back here and I'll show you the second part now that you have your first side sewed on you're going to put your next two side borders on you're going to only sew when you sew your quarter inch you're going to sew down to this seam here and if you're having difficulty with just the pin um, on your presser foot, on your presser foot, hang on, let's get it focal, wrong way. On your presser foot, you have these lines going across here. This is a quarter inch to here, but that's not what we're concerned about. Your center line on this side, this right here, that's where your needle falls. So if you stop your fabric, if you were to stop your fabric, oh goodness, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. <coughs> if you stop your fabric on that line, you've hit your mark. For the mitered corner, um, you can either flip it open and flip it down this way. Um, for these smaller ones, this is your under one, this is your over flip it under, take this tail edge here, your outer edge, match it with your outer edge of what's left up here and you'll get that perfect miter. Give it a little finger press, stick a pin in it um, and then I would give it a good press too before you sew on your next border. Give it a good good press in there. You're going to want to do that to all of your borders. Let's see if I can do this in cam. Keep everything kind of so you can see stuff. All right. Um, now, also, match it to the outside. This is part of our bend, but you need these two to match, the outside and the outside. And just give it a little snug. Don't pull too hard because you don't want to stretch your fabric. For the second border, 
I cut two and a half inches. Um, reason being is I'd rather trim after it's all done being quilted on this side. Actually, you could quilt now if you wanted to, but I'd rather put that second um, border on and have that done. It's out of the way. I like to quilt this way because um, I think there's a little more room for for error. For one, if your block's supposed to be 15, and ends up 14 and a half, or 15 and a half, you can do your borders accordingly afterwards. Your blocks are, you know, your blocks are all going to be 18 inches or whatever size you choose. Okay, so. Um, we want this to match the same directions as we put the first tails on. Zoom out. And in, out. So that our miters, our miters match. So this was my first border here. I'm going to put my second border on. Now, this is why I want you to iron because and you can trim this afterwards or beforehand it doesn't matter um, but if you're going to trim leave yourself a good half an inch or so just leave some tails you're going to once again sew right to the edge the top edge of this um, of this border and of the border on the other side back there can you see yeah edge to edge. Place this on top and put your marker pins and do that on both sides after you have everything mitered. Now we're ready to sew on the last border edge. Again we're going to um, go right to this edge, back tacking when we get there. Um, and if all is right, your quarter inch will match right where your little holes are in there. Your quarter inch seam will come up and we should have a pretty close to almost perfect miter on all our corners. So sew these two on. And then we'll trim up our dog ears. I like to wait. Except for I don't trim the big guys. After I have my last border on, I like to, um, this is when I like to trim my dog ears of the first border. Just leaving, not going super close. I don't know if you can see that, I'll leave a quarter inch, half inch extra just so I don't um, snip so I don't snip the other stuff. Okay, now we have to miter these corners just like we did before finger over there this is we're going this way so pull him up and under match this to the outside we're still matching that way you get the right the right direction and this this guy's a little short I left him short on this side um, so that's why I like the longer a little bit longer you can match a little bit easier without tugging too much and we have that nice 45 in there. Give it a finger press. Now these ones I won't I won't trim at all until um, we're ready to get things quilted. If you want, you can you can um, do a hand basted blind little stitch down there or you can do a, machi a machine stitch if you would like and again on I put, okay yeah this way 
Gotta make sure they're all matching. I like them to match. I never cared for when one corner went one way, one corner went the other way. It just didn't look uniform. Okay. There is, see, and there isn't much to match up to. So I said if you can leave your tails long, I should have centered mine better, but I did not. It's okay, it all works out in the end. Um, don't forget to take your pins out that were holding everything together back here. Um, you can feel free to go ahead and quilt this any way you wish. Um, and that's all ready to go. If you have any questions or if there's a block you'd like me to do because there's no plan on the blocks, it's just that there's going to be 25 blocks. Um, if I can do it without a Y seam, because I don't want any Y seams in here, challenge me. Go right ahead. I'll see if I can get her done. We're a little wonky here. Can you see that? Just a tiny bit. It's not bad. It's plenty or small enough to hide. And that's the worst I've ever seen, honestly. So, yeah. Um, Post some comments, uh, questions. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook. That's easier because um, that's attached to my phone. So I'll have that with me all the time. I can answer your questions faster. Um, until we meet again with block number three. Take care. Have fun quilting. And be safe in your travels.